Good morning and thanks for joining us again on The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now having conversations about diaspora voting and the electronic transmission of results regarding the 2023 presidential elections. And joining us is uh, Mr. Nick Agule, uh, member NIDO, as well as Chibuzo Obochi. He's the chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora organization NIDO UK South. Good morning to you both. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having us. Okay. Um, I want to begin with you. Yes. Mr. Obochi, I want to begin with you um, regarding this um, story that we're looking at. Looking ahead um, you know, to the 2023 elections, there's been lots of you know, debates regarding the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And it seems that the senators, the House of Reps members, will be meeting today to discuss this further and that they may grant INEC uh, you know, permission to elect transmit results electronically. Would you say this is a win for democracy or this is something we should have achieved a long time ago? Mr. Obuchi. Yeah, thank you very much and thank you viewers. Uh, I should think it's something we should have achieved a long time ago, but it's never too late to do the right thing. So the point that is starting now is, uh, is uh, we'll say kudos to them and we hope that they will succeed in doing so. We've been on this road for quite a long time, more than 10 years ago, we've been we're lobbying for this uh, action to make sure that we have the right to vote and that electronic voting should be the way to go is the future. So for them to now wake up to start to do it, I think is something that we should applaud them for. Um, our investigation have shown that even the presidency, the INEC, everybody in Nigeria supports diaspora voting. And for them to now do it is something that we should be happy and look forward to a successful outcome. Okay, Mr. Agule, can you hear me? Mr. Nick Agule. Okay, um, while we try to reconnect with Mr. Ugule, I still want to follow up with you on that question. Um, you say it's a great thing that, you know, we're now considering this. But you know that INEC will only get this mandate to electronically transmit results if these recommendations before the federal lawmakers are passed as presented and if assented to by the president. Now, do you think that this is something we should be expected? You know, that the president would assent to this and that we can officially transmit results electronically? Yeah, the, the funny thing about what we do is that a uh, few years ago, I think it was in 2000, and the last election, this was already passed and it was sent to the president to be assented by the president. The only reason the president gave, if I will remember clearly, was that uh, it was too close to the elections and that he, you can't change the, the game nearer, the, the, you can't change the rules at, at the tail end of the games because it was less than six months to the elections. So now we have a long time to the elections. So there should be nothing stopping the president from assenting. I'm even surprised we're still discussing this. Hmm. It's something we should not discuss. It has already been passed. It's already been sent to the presidency. It has come back. What I expected the Senate to do, or the House, the General Assembly to do, was to repackage what they sent to the president previously and possibly do some fine touches and send it back to the president. It was there and he accepted it. Just the sole reason that he gave was that it was too close to elections. So we should get it done now. All right, Nika Gule, good morning once again. Yes, good morning. All right, um, there is, of course, this conversation has been on for a bit. Uh, there have been, uh, you know, the times when, of course, uh, it was rumored that the Senate had rejected, the National Assembly had rejected the electronic transfer of uh, results. Um, but I want you to, you know, quickly address some of the reasons that um, you were given uh, for, you know, not you know, allowing for electronic transfer of results? And also, do you think that there is still some loopholes that can be spotted even with the electronic transfer of results? Do you think that it's still possible that false figures uh, can still be put forward uh, in the elections? Uh, well, the, the, the thing, thank you very much for that question. The thing is that we're in 2021. We are no longer in 2000 or 1980. Technology has now improved to the point that a bank can allow you to take your phone, connect securely to your bank account, and move money from your bank account to another account, or to even pay for 
any transaction that you have done. That is the level to which technology has gone to. So if we can move our money securely, electronically, from person to person, then there is no fear that we can transmit our votes electronically as well from pulling unit to a central collection and, and everything is fine. So long as the people who are placed in charge, which in this case is INEC, is able to take the necessary precautions to ensure that that transmission process is safe. The same way the banks are taking precautions to ensure that if I transfer money from my account to another account, it is safe. The money leaves my account and lands in the other account safely without anybody interfering in the process to steal money from my account. So we have got to the point where technology has, has improved, where we can securely transmit our vote. Now, I understand the genuine concerns that have been raised regarding areas that don't have data services. Well, if we look at that, we will say that thanks to the reforms in the telecom sector and with the introduction of uh, private uh, sector players like MTN and Co, Nigeria has now got at least 90% coverage of telephone and data services. So if the National Assembly makes a law for electronic transmission of votes, you know that you have covered 90% of the geographic territory of Nigeria. And if you are thinking about the number of voters, you have covered all the cities, the towns, and, the, and most of the villages. You know, majority of the votes are coming from the cities anyway. You know, so by the time you cover all the cities, the towns, and villages that are on telephone and data, what will be left will be 10% or less of the voters. And for that, the National Assembly can make a step out provision on how they can transmit their votes. You know, but for the rest of the country that is on data, that is on, on telephone services, should transmit their votes on, um, electronically. So that is the point to which Nigeria has got now, and this legislation will be well implemented if it is passed into law. Yeah, but what I'm asking is, do you th still think that there is a possibility in any way that, you know, loopholes can be found anywhere around this, uh, uh, you know, this uh, process? Um, with which fake results, false figures can also still uh, be put forward? Okay, now, uh, when we come to technology, it depends on who is operating that technology. The phone that we have in our hand, if you are not careful with the use of that phone, someone can infiltrate that phone and steal your data. So that is possible. So that loophole is there. But what I'm saying is that this loophole can be managed if the operator, in this case, is I know what they are doing. You know, if I engages the right expertise and they are in the diaspora who are technical next servers from infiltration and from interference. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. So, you know, we have what we call risk management. Risk management is that if you identify a risk, you now build to me. All right. I think we might be having challenges uh, with uh, Nika Gule's. Uh uh, conversation there, but we still, I believe, have uh, Mr. Chibuzo Gochi. Can you still hear us? All right. Uh, I think we, we would have to reconnect with both of our guests this morning and continue this conversation. I, we, we're very likely I, going to... I, I hear you clearly. Oh, Mr. Oh, okay. Gochi, thank right. you. 
Um, Mr. Wachi, we're still talking about um, the, the issue Osage earlier raised, and that's regarding what the you know the fears that Nigerians might be having that you know even with the online system, the online transmission of votes, that it can still be manipulated. Mr. Nick Agule there was talking about a risk management factor. Um, can you take it from there, please? Yeah, what I'll say is that I, we can't say there's something that is 100% uh, risk-free. There should be risk, but the issue is that the risk can be managed uh, from what uh, my friend uh, Nick Agule was saying. Risk can always be managed. We can see, for example, what happened in, uh, in the U.S. election recently. There were issues with, uh, or purported issues about the electronic voting or what uh, the vote counts and the system that was used. But at the end of it, they they at the end of it, you saw that the writing was done because the percentage of error will never influence the elections. So with electronic voting, it's definite that uh, we, are, we are going to get some risk factors here and there. But in, in the totality of it, the writing will be done and it's the best way forward for now. Okay, Mr. Awoche, I want us to you know give Nigerians a good sense of just exactly why you know, this electronic transmission of results might be very important and, you know, how it's going to influence the Nigerian elections in 2023 and beyond. Let's look at the process that we currently operate now with the manual collation of results. What are the challenges with that method? Yeah, I, I, won't, uh, I won't say I'm an expert in this area. Uh, I thought uh, Nick would handle it. I was uh, looking forward to a diaspora voting, but the way we, we when the Ages ago, we know we, we, we go by, by foot, later on we go, we go with bicycle, we came with car, electronic cars, and then we are moving forward to even flying cars. That's how technology works. The world cannot be stat static. We cannot remain where we are today without moving forward. With technology, there are a lot of things happening in the world. We have the blockchain things coming up. There are ways that we can transmit things instantly. So within the next, within 24 hours of voting, we are sure to have the results. So the third party that comes in between to fight and seize uh, ballot box, uh, yeah. boxes, that will not happen again. Because my understanding is that sometimes when they are transmitting the ballot boxes from the police station to the collection system, there are people in between that seize, seize the boxes, fight for it. I think I've, some, I've seen some that uh, went viral where somebody was being shot at because he was carrying the ballot box. So these are things that can be prevented with electronic voting. And I believe all the... All the, all the monitors will be there, the uh, parties will be there, everyone will be seeing what is going on. Once it's been announced at the polling, at the polling unit, it will be immediately transmitted. So there will be no question of third party hijack on the way. Right. So I think it's the best way to go and we should, we should be looking forward. That's where the world is going and we should be left behind. Nigeria yeah. should not be left behind on this. All right. I, I, I hope that we will have time to also dig deeper into... Uh, talking about the issues on ground at the polling units, uh, because if, if you don't have, uh, you know, a free and fair process at the polling units, whatever figures that is being transmitted to the annex server will have obviously be uh, uh, faulted. Yes. Um, hopefully we'll get there. But let's now talk about diaspora voting. Um, uh, there is a large uh, diaspora community in different parts of the world. What do you think we can achieve with this? And how do you think this might change uh, the uh, direction of Nigerian uh, politics? Yeah, thank you for that question. And that's the question of the, the moment for us in diaspora. We've achieved a lot of things through our advocacy in diaspora. We've achieved the NITCOM, the Nigerian Diaspora Commission being led by BKW. That's a one-stop shop for diasporans to deal with Nigeria, to engage with Nigeria. So that was something good for us. So what we are looking forward to now, all diaspora is for diaspora voting. Nothing makes me a Nigerian. The fact that I'm having a Nigerian passport, that's all. I don't have any benefit of being a Nigerian. The only sole benefit of me being a Nigerian is to vote and be voted for, if that possibility is there. So if I'm a diaspora, we remit a lot of money to Nigeria. There's a lot of, uh, I don't want to go to remittances because that's what the diaspora is known for. But as a Nigerian doing all of these things, if I cannot vote and be voted for, then what makes me a Nigerian? Then I should be called a Nigerian. So diaspora voting is the key thing that diasporans want from Nigeria. And the nice thing about this is that we've uh, spoken to all, uh, all stakeholders and everybody happens to be in support of it. 
from the presidency to the INEC to the National Assembly to the governors, they are all in support of diaspora voting. So what we're only looking forward to is the implementation. And we understand, as a lawyer, I do understand that there are some amendments that need to be done in the Constitution and the, and the Electoral Act. So we are looking forward to this amendment being done so that things can be things can move forward. Hmm. So diasporans are eager to be full-fledged Nigerians. We have been discriminated against. That's why we say it as uh, if we can't vote and be voted for. So we look forward to that time when we can be able to exercise the, the only right that makes us Nigerians. Hmm. We have, we have people from other parts of the world come to Nigeria, they buy land, just like diasporans come and buy land. They buy land, build on it. Every other person can come and buy land, live in Nigeria. But the only thing that makes a Nigerian a Nigerian is that right to vote and be voted for. And we cannot be denied that single right that makes us Nigerians. Okay, so Mr. Wuchi, in the UK where you are, I believe, how is it done? And in other, in other countries, other developed countries, how is this diaspora system done? And what recommendations would you make for Nigeria and her electoral process? In... For Nigeria, I think every country is unique in its own, its own way. What we've done uh, in our advocacy is to ask INEC to look for what a bespoke meter for what suits Nigeria, because we don't want to replicate. We are not Americans. We are not uh, the British. We want to look at a Nigerian model that will suit Nigeria. We have the embassy, the high commissions, and the embassies over right place. People can go to go there actually and vote and register and vote. I think one of the things that stops us from voting is when they say you must vote at where you have registered to vote. So because we cannot come down to Nigeria and register and then uh, come back to Nigeria again to vote. That can be done at the embassies. And the question of not having the data uh, of Nigerians in diaspora is also something that has been plugging up that we don't know how many Nigerians are in diaspora. We estimate 7 million Nigerians in diaspora, which is a substantial amount of uh, population that can change the vote at any one, one point in time. Hmm. But we think all Nigerians, or most Nigerians in diaspora do have their passports. And of recent, we are now having our BVN. We had our BVN done a few years ago. Now we're having our name done and linked, linking it uh, to our mobile phones and have our name. So these three sources of data can give us the exact population of Nigerians in diaspora. We don't have to, we don't have to change the wheel. There's a lot of things, the passport, the BVN, and the name. Those can identify us. I have all three of it. And so you cannot say you don't know I'm a Nigerian. I don't know uh, the, the population of Nigerians in diaspora. The immigration office should be able to know how many people hold Nigerian passport living in the UK. Okay. And that data can be used to uh, uh, for diaspora voting when the time comes and pass on to INEC. We may only be asked to validate that or to go back and use the same data to, to, do, to conduct our electoral registration. Right. So I think uh, Nigeria should have a unique way of doing things, and INEC is on top of it. Our interaction with INEC shows that they are only waiting for the law to be passed, and they will roll out a platform, uh, a procedure that will suit Nigerians in Nigeria's own unique uh, way. Okay. Yeah, earlier we had spoken about um, census figures, um, you know, and I think it's, it's a great point that you're making now with regards knowing exactly the number of uh, uh, persons or Nigerians living in diaspora um, because if you don't have those numbers then it's going to be difficult uh, for you to know what you're expecting with regards to the elections. Um, let, let's also talk about you know the uh, uh, registration process now. Um, do you think that we will be able to pull off you know full registration of all Nigerians living in diaspora? Uh, online registration very likely uh, between now and when it's time for the elections. I, I think we'll, we'll go far. You know, when something starts, there's always a, a transition period that uh, will have that teaching problem that will happen at the initial stage. I don't foresee us uh, the 2023 election being a full, being, being, I don't foresee us being able to capture all before 2023 election, but a substantial number will start. And in the next elections, you'll see an improvement. What Nigerians in diaspora only want is that recognition. Once you give them that recognition, they will flow with it. When we started with the BVN, while it was free in Nigeria, we paid for it to, to get it in, Nigeria, in, in, in the diaspora, which shows us how eager we are to, to engage with Nigeria. The new registration, for example, now is free in Nigeria, but uh, in the UK, we pay 40 pounds, uh, almost $15. But we are still going ahead and doing it, which shows you how important Nigeria is to us. 
So with this as well, once the once it starts, even if it means for us to pay for administrative fee or uh, something to to get it done, that's once we do it and it will showcase our engagement, our love for our country, Nigeria. So it may not be total. We estimate two, two million Nigerians in the UK. So I don't see us capturing two million Nigerians within from now to to 2023 because it will, it will involve a lot of uh, sensitization, a lot of advocacy. A lot of uh, media uh, media campaign. So, as but I see us getting a substantial number that will make diasporans relevant and in the Nigerian governance. Because without us being in government, every decision made in Nigeria is just we just appear to be uh, I don't know slaves in Nigeria. We, we can't contribute to anything. We are, we are, our voice is not being heard. So, without us being in government or participating in voting, we are not Nigerians and we we, we feel led back and we feel uh, discriminated against. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bochi. Let's bring back Mr. Nick Agule into the conversation. Mr. Nick, Mr. Agule. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so yes, yes before before you left, oh, I was you know trying to engage Mr. Obochi about a subject, but let, let's let's have you you know getting your perspective on that. Um, the current system that we have now with the manual transmission of you know results, what are the challenges with it? The, the manual transmission of results, I, I actually was hearing uh, my chairman as what he was saying, is that uh, the, the, the votes have been counted. And then uh, uh, ballot boxes are being moved from one place. Okay, so initially, uh, ballot boxes used to be moved from the pooling unit to the collection center for the votes to be counted. But I observed in the Edo governorship elections that INEC introduced a very good thing. The votes were actually counted right there at the polling uh, unit. And all those who went to vote witnessed the votes uh, tallied and counted and the results announced there at the polling unit. What then that meant is that there was no need, therefore, to now carry those ballot boxes to a collection center to, to uh, count the votes. So that eliminated the risk of ballot box snatching or ballot box uh, disappearing or some other votes being stuffed into the ballot boxes when it was in transit between the polling unit and the collection center. So if INEC can actually now implement what they tried in a, a dual governorship election nationwide, that would totally solve the issue of uh, ballot box machine or stuffing of 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 of, uh, of ballot boxes. Okay, Mr. Now Agu what is left is this. Uh, can you allow me one? Yes, go one ahead. Minute? Let me let me yeah let me exactly let me land the point. The, 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 what I make did in the two states by counting the votes at, at the polling unit and. An, now seeing the results made all the voters to become election monitors. Because what happened was that they counted in their polling unit. And if I voted in a polling unit and I know what the result is in my polling unit, I have become an election monitor in that my polling unit. What INEC now needs to do is that. I need needs to publish results of election nationwide. Oh, I think it's still a struggle uh, with uh, Nikaguli there, uh, but he, he he you know is making uh, very very interesting points. And um, for everyone who uh, followed uh, up with the Edo State governorship elections, you must have seen that that was the process. Um, there are videos also, you know, showing people counting along with the INEC officials at the po uh, polling centers. Um, and then also, you know, those were the same figures that were sent to the collation center. So, um, he, like he said, you know, every person who participates in the election now becomes an, an official or, or rather an unofficial election monitor. Um, which makes the process, you know, a lot And it smoother. gives them, you know, more of a sense of res responsibility, yes. Yes. you know, to participate in the election yes. process. And that's what we need for all hands to be on deck to make sure that, you know, the right person, that everyone has voted, the consensus candidate, you know, gets into power. Absolutely. And uh, we hope we can get our guests back because we have a, just a few minutes on this conversation. So we also need to 
you know, begin to find, now that we know what the challenges are with the manual, you know, election system, we've seen this, we've seen this, you know, over the years, mm. how, you know, there's violence in, you know, polling centers or collation centers, ballot box snatching, all these logistic issues that, you know, you get election results in one, in one area, one local government, and it's to take, it it's to take, exactly, because they say, oh, it's in a riverine area, or oh, it's far, we need, so all of these logistics issues that we can simply eliminate by using smartphones or the IVED yeah. that, you know, INEC has brought up. Um, Mr. Bochi, Mr. Agule, do we have you both? Yes, All right, Mr. Nika Gule, yeah. please go ahead with your point, and then I want you to also wrap up that answer with um, by telling us how exactly this new electoral transmission of results would affect the face of elections or impact elections in Nigeria going forward. Okay, thank you very much. So let me land the point I was making about voters observing the counting of votes at the polling unit. The voters have now become election monitors. So each voter now knows the number of the results of the election at his own polling unit. What is now left is for INEC to take the next step by publishing their results polling unit by polling unit. So that every voter in Nigeria is able to identify for his own polling unit whether what INEC has published is exactly what was counted and declared at his polling unit. The, the, the addition of the pooling unit result is something that anybody can just do. So, I, I, I mean, any Excel spreadsheet or calculator can now use, can be used to add the, the result, pooling unit by pooling unit, and we can have the election result for a senatorial district, a house of rep, seat, governorship, or even presidential, with every Nigerian identifying their votes at their pooling unit. You know, because the problem now is that when I declare the result at the polling unit, when now we go to the state uh, collection center where the results have been announced, the results have been announced local government by local government. So voters have now lost the link between what they observed at their polling unit and what is now being announced as the local government result at the state collection center. So I need must take that step to publish results of Nigeria's election, pulling unit by pulling unit. Every other thing is just addition. Any even primary school children can add those pulling unit results and we can now know who is the governor of a state, who is a senator, who is a or rep, or who is the president. So that is, that is number one. Number two, your question as to whether electronic transmission of, of uh, votes will help our, our electoral process. The answer is a capital yes. Like I said, we are transferring money, our money, the thing that we value so much, so much, our money, we are, we are transmitting it electronically. So let us also transmit our votes electronically to change the face of election in Nigeria, add credibility to the process, and I need must take the step to manage the risk of someone infiltrating the servers. Just like the banks that are managing the risk of people infiltrating their servers. You can't just enter a bank and go and carry money from an account to another account. No, because the banks have stopped it. So I next you engage competent Nigerians, both home and abroad, to take care of their servers and have the big... Oh, all right. We apologize uh, for that network glitch yeah. there, but he, yeah, his points you know, were well noted. Um, well, thank you very much to both our guests, Mr. Nick Agule, uh, a public affairs analyst, as well as Mr. Obochi there, representing the Nigerian Teen Diaspora Organization, NIDO. Um, thank you both, gentlemen, and do have a great day. All right. Um, we'll take a short break. Uh, when we come back, we're moving into a, a next conversation this morning, which is going, uh, going to be on the um, National Assembly. And, of course, it's... Uh, asking that the Navy is immediately suspends its uh, recruitment process because uh, it doesn't seem to be respecting federal character. We'll get into that conversation right after this short break. <laughs>